Hey there, hope you're going well. I'm Jade the Beamer and I have such a big book haul to show you. I got so many books for Christmas in sales and I also did secondhand shopping, which maybe I shouldn't have, but it was a time of year to just spend and treat ourselves and others. So I did that. I'm gonna go chronologically um, in terms of what I got. So let's go. First little haul I did was at a secondhand shop. So I love going secondhand book shopping just because you never know what you're gonna find, and there's usually such cool old books or such good deals on books that you know about. The first one I saw is one that I hadn't heard of before, but I thought was really cool, and that is Top Tips for Life <laughs> by Kate Reardon. I haven't heard of this one before, but I got it because it just seemed like such a cool little book. I like how it's green on the inside, and it's pretty much just a book filled with like tips. So what to do on a first date, how to prevent catching the common cold, how to steam vegetables when you don't have a steamer. It just has different sections with just random tips, bits of wisdom, I guess. So there's ones for beauty, cooking, gardening, health, friendships, parenting, weddings, work, Christmas, happiness, stuff like that. So I think it'll just be a really helpful thing if I don't know how to do something and, and I need some guidance. And it was very cheap. I got this one for $2, I think. So that's a very cool little book, a little self-help book, a little guidebook. I do have to disclaim that <laughs> some of the books in this video today I did get because of the Books Unbound podcast. Ariel Bissett is one of my heroes. Uh, I always watch her videos and I always listen to the podcast she does with Raylene. And they usually talk about the similar books or the same books they recommend a lot. So I picked some of those up and one of those was one recommended by Ariel and that was Weather by Jamie Offal. So I was walking through the secondhand bookstore not expecting anything and randomly I saw this book. How lucky. So Ariel talks about this one because it's like a cli-fi. It's about weather and fictitious climatic events, I guess. So when I saw this one, I just thought it was so random and rare and I haven't seen it anywhere else. And it was just so cool to find it. Cause I think, isn't this like a Canadian book that you can only get in Canada or something? I just think that's so cool. And it's such a beautiful little book as well. Like it's hardcover and blue. I really like the spine of this one with the arrows. And I think it's also told in an interesting format as well. Like it's kind of ellipses and not a very traditional reading experience, I guess. So I'm really happy that I picked this one up. Apparently Jenny Offal was very good. I can't remember what else she wrote though. Maybe some help in the comments. And cause it's secondhand, someone's written some notes in here and like highlighted some passages they like. So that's interesting. I'm really grateful they did it in pencil. So <laughs> if I don't like it, I can erase it. But yeah, I'm excited to give this one a go when I wanna read a book about the climate and weather. The next one I picked up, um, I sort of knew about, um, but I just kind of grabbed it when I saw it. And that is The Girl and the Goddess by Nikita Gill. I know that Nikita Gill is a contemporary poet. I haven't got any of her work though. So when I saw that this was by her, I thought I might as well try it out. It's hardcover and it's really pretty. Like it has these pastel colors on it. It's so gorgeous. And one of my friends is a really big fan of Nikita Gill. Look at the inside, look. That's a pastel rainbow right there. So it's just really gorgeous and it was cheap. So there's that. I'm not too sure what these poems are gonna be about. It looks like there's some illustrations in here as well, which is pretty cool. Meet Paro, a girl with a strong will, a full heart and much to learn. Born into a family reeling from the ruptures of partition, follow her as she crosses the precarious lines between childhood teenage discovery and re realizing her adult self. I guess it's like a coming of age story, but it mentioned partition, which I did learn about this year because I also read The Shadow Lines, which was about partition. So it seems cool to read some poetry about that and it sounds very wild and freeing. Um, so I'm excited to check this poet out. Okay, the next books I got in that mini haul um, are quite old books, so I'm just gonna go through those. First one is Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Now I know what you're thinking, this is a beautiful, 
edition and you would be right because it is however <laughs> there is a story here so this book is very very old and the spine was kind of falling off of it when i went to buy it but then the cashier accidentally broke the spine completely off of the book and she was like oh it's okay you know i'll take some money off of it and i'll fix it for you so she glued it back on and everything's fine and it was like two dollars so i can't really complain but she glued it on upside down so look this is the spine and then everything's upside down uh i mean it doesn't matter like it's still really beautiful and i have a story to tell now but just a little bit annoying if i go to read it and it's all just upside down but anyway if you haven't heard of moby dick it's a classic story about this guy called Ahab who really wants to kill this white whale. I don't really know why. I mean, it's just a whale, so maybe he's evil or maybe Ahab is just a bad dude that wants to kill the environment and stuff. Either way, I'm excited to read it. Everyone says Moby Dick is really good. I've always just been a bit put off because the editions I've seen have been huge, but this one is actually pretty small and the letters are um, pretty you know, digestible. So I'm excited to read this one. And it has cool pictures in it. So there we go. You may or may not know from my video I made a little while ago on The Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, but I really like Charles Dickens. Um, that's the only book I've read of his. I'm currently reading Hard Times. And I'm only a little bit of, of the way in, but I'm enjoying it so far. I really like his writing style. Um, it's very comedic, I think. I don't know if anyone else thinks that about Charles Dickens, but I just think it's really funny and descriptive and takes me back to that time, but in a nice way, not full of sewers and, I don't know, misogyny. Uh, I had to pick up more of Charles' stuff because I only have that bind up, which has Great Expectations, A Christmas Carol and Hard Times in it. So I picked up two more. I got Little Dorit <laughs> and David Copperfield. I'm pretty sure, isn't David Copperfield a magician? Who is copyrighted here? <laughs> I think surely Charles Dickens came first. And I don't know if that's related, um, but yeah, it's just this cute little edition of David Copperfield. So I thought I'd check that one out. And this one is so beautiful of Little Dorit. I haven't heard of this one at all by Charles Dickens. So, I don't know. I just thought it was a cool one to try. I have no idea what, what it's about, but maybe that's a good thing to go into Dickens with no <laughs> knowledge or preconceptions. So there you go. The next old one I got out of that little secondhand haul was the Theban Plays by Sophocles. So in my last video about my favorite books of 2021, I talked about Sophocles' Antigone when I was talking about um, Home Fire by Camilla Shamsie because Shamsie's book is a modern novel reinterpreting Antigone. And Home Fire obviously was in that video, so it's one of my new favorite books. So I wanted to get to the source. I really wanted to find Antigone and I did. So the Theban plays have uh, Oedipus, Oedipus at Colonus, which I think is the sequel to Oedipus maybe, and also Antigone. So I can read this, yeah, experience the original play and see how it relates to Home Fire. Um, this one also being secondhand does have some notes in it, which may be helpful. I mean, it's also in pencil, which I really appreciate because I can erase it if it's not relevant to me. But yeah, it's just, it's a nice little book. There was another edition of this, but it was more expensive and it was more damaged. So obviously I grabbed the cheaper one that is newer. I don't know how that works really. If anyone works at a secondhand bookstore, please um, enlighten me. But that's my mini secondhand book haul. On to the next chapter of this video. I also did another secondhand haul and it actually sort of wasn't my fault because there was a deal saying you could get six books for six dollars. So tell me a book lover who would resist that. I bet you can't. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna speed through these ones. So the first one I found was Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. I really like Rainbow Rowell's writing. Carry On is my favorite one of hers. I've also read Fangirl, Eleanor and Park. So I do like her writing. I haven't read Attachments yet though, so I thought this would be a new one for me um, in her writing. I think it's a contemporary about these people working in an office who send emails to each other and fall in love. So it sounds cute and office-y. Hopefully it's not like the Office TV show because I watched that this year and I was not a fan. But yeah, it seems cute and it was a dollar, so there you go. The next one I found was King Lear by Shakespeare. So I do actually have a bind up of all of Shakespeare's plays, but I thought it would be good to have one just by itself. And I haven't read King Lear yet, so this way I can read it without damaging my <laughs> beautiful bind up. <laughs> you know Shakespeare, I don't have to introduce him, right? I actually have no idea what this one is about, presumably a king. So yeah, I think it'll be cool to find out. I believe this one is a tragedy as opposed to a comedy or a romance, but we'll find out. The next one I picked up is Daughters of the Sea by Catherine Lasky. So this one is a bit random. Um, I have never heard of this one before, but I saw it and I <laughs> read what it was about and <laughs> the blurb sold me. Hannah wants to be normal, but she's not. The sea calls to her and she can see a delicate tracing of scales on her legs. So it's a mermaid book and it's one I haven't read, so I have to increase my mermaid genre collection because it's just awesome. I love reading about the ocean and I don't know, fish <laughs> fish friends and living that fantasy. So I had to pick this one. The next book I picked was The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. I'm so sorry, I know I pronounced that wrong. This is another one that the Books Unbound podcast talks about. I believe Raileen read it and she really liked it. But it's also just a really famous book, like a classic, sort of. So I've heard really good things and it seems like a really important book. So when I saw it, I just thought I would pick it up. Let's see if I can find out what it's about. Hmm. Well, the first chapter is called The Cemetery of Forgotten Books. And at the back there's images, so I don't know if I accidentally just spoiled myself. Not really sure what it's about. I think it might be something to do with the war, a war. But there you go. I will let you know what I think of this when I read it. it it's also of the wind and we know my favorite book of all time is Name of the Wind. So maybe, <laughs> maybe there's a link there. The next book I found was one I'd never heard of before and it's called The Riddle and the Night by, how do you pronounce that name? Giles, Giles? Hang on a sec. I'm gonna say Giles or Giles. Milton. Um, it was super random, but it's a nice hardback. Let's see what it looks like. Nike. Very nice. It has deckled edges, which I don't really like. I like books to be smooth. But it seemed really cool and interesting. It's about this guy called Sir John Mandeville, a long forgotten knight who was once the most celebrated writer in medieval Europe. So it's all about how he traveled around and met all these other famous writers and stuff. So... It seems like a biography of this random night writer dude. Um, and that sounds really interesting. So thought I would pick it up. If you've read this one, let me know how it was. The last secondhand book I got in that deal was this one, Fool's Errand. So I have read Fool's Assassin and Fool's Quest by Robin Hobb, but I think this is a different series in that world because it says the 20 man book one. So I'm glad this is the first book that I can start, but I have no idea how it relates to that series. If you have any input on the structure of these books, let me know. So that'd be really helpful. I don't know if I was supposed to have read this before, but like, I'm gonna read it anyway, because um, I have it now. But I saw this one and I thought it would be another cool Robin Hobb book to read because I actually did like the other two. I thought they were very interesting fantasy books. And this one looks like one of the original like publications of it. I really like this cover. It feels very old and fantasy-esque and it's thick like the other ones. So it'll take me a while to get through it. So yeah, I'm excited to learn how this one relates to the other series. And it seems like it's also got Fit Chivalry in it, who's the protagonist in Fool's Assassin. So yeah, I'm keen to figure out what this one's about. I actually have no idea what this thing on the back is because it freaks me out. Okay, we're halfway there. Living on a prayer. <laughs> so that was my second secondhand book haul. Uh, the next books I'm gonna show you are ones I got for Christmas. 
My friend got me this original edition of The Growing Pains of Adrian Mole by Sue Townsend. I've read The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, which is the first book in this series, and this is the second one. And it came out in 1864 or something. In 1984, sorry. And this is one of the original ones. So it's super old and a little bit beat up, but I think it's really cool. I somewhat enjoyed the first book, so I have this one now so I can read it and see what I think. The next book I got for Christmas was Snow White with the Red Hair. This is volume one. So I rewatched the anime this year because um, it's one of my favorite anime uh, and someone got me the manga. Um, so that is really cool. I haven't got this one yet and I'm keen to see how it's similar or different to the anime. But essentially this anime is just really wholesome. It's about this um, girl called Shirayuki who's got red hair and she kind of runs away from this awful prince but runs into another prince who's really nice and she's studying to be a herbalist, so like a healer. And she stays with them and just grows and shares her wholesomeness and knowledge so it's just really light and nice and yeah it's a manga i hope i can get to soon because it's the closest thing well this is actually is the original i was going to say the closest thing to the anime but this is the closest thing to the book so yeah i think that'll be really cool if you've read the manga let me know if it's like the anime the next book i got for christmas is Today's Best Nonfiction. Um, so this is a collection of nonfiction sh stories about people. So the first one's about Princess Diana. Um, and there are some other ones in here that I'm not too familiar with. And there's Diana on the cover. It's this really nice, like, hardcover edition of a nonfiction book. And it's, it seems like a cool way to digest it, like short stories about real people and it's also secondhand so people know me well that I like secondhand books so yeah I'm not too sure what to make of this one but I think it'll be pretty cool to read some non-fiction the last book I got for Christmas is Moon Phases and You by Cecilia Lattery so I've always wanted a book about the moon like a factual one about like the actual craters on it and its history and you know about the moon but I do have other books about the moon like there's another one that's like about its phases and like how it influences nature and stuff this one seems to be more about how it influences like us as people and it's, it seems a bit more spiritual than scientific us is still about the moon and it's really gorgeous so i really appreciate it yeah it seems about like rituals and stuff it also has lunar phases and plants and stuff so i think that's really cool and just yeah new ways i can look at the moon and interpret it and learn about it and it also is just a really beautiful book so i hope i can get to this one soon the last section of this book haul are ones that i bought for myself because this year has been crazy and we all deserve some books in our lives and also these were the ones that no one got me for christmas so i had to get them for myself <laughs> The first one I'm showing you is What Once Was Mine by Liz Braswell. This is part of the Twisted Tale series. And basically these are parodies um, or like what ifs of the Disney movies. So this is the one about Tangled. What if Rapunzel's mother drank from the wrong flower? So I just think it's really cool to like have that twist on the tale and the movie and see what could have happened. And Tangled's one of my favorite Disney movies. So I wanted to get this one. I also got for myself Part of Your World by Liz Braswell. I was originally only gonna get What Once Was Mine, but I saw this was the collector's edition. I couldn't resist and it was cheap. It's really shiny and it's got like blue edges and it's just a really cool edition. And Part of Your World, you know, another mermaid book. So there you go. What if Ariel had never defeated Ursula? So I can see what, what would have happened. Ooh, and that's pretty cool. So there you go, I'm keen. I'm keen to try these ones out. The next one I got because one of my friends recommended it to me. She sent me a list of like smutty, steamy romance reads that she liked. And um, I came across this one that was on her list, so I got it. The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. I've seen a lot of people talking about this. Um, I'm not too sure what it's about, but judging from the cover, it's about like these two lab partners that fall in love. A TikTok sensation, apparently. So yeah, I'm excited to 
read this one and feel the cute scientific connection between them. I really hope it's cute and dreamy. <laughs> the next book I got, sort of out of rage. And that's because I've been wanting it since it came out. I was so excited all year for it. And I wanted to get it, but people kept telling me, no, it's your birthday soon. So you just have to wait and see. And then after it was Christmas, so people were like, no, you just have to wait and see. And I saw, and no one got it for me. <laughs> so I waited for nothing. And that is The Daughter of the Deep by Rick Ride. And it's probably my most anticipated book of this year. So I got it for myself. I still have to read it, but I'm so excited. It's a modern interpretation of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. So I'm really excited for this one. It has a female protagonist and it just seems super cool. Another watery book. Yeah, I'm super keen to get to this one, finally. The next book I got was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I talked about this in my favourite books of 2021 video. I originally listened to the audiobook of this one, but I loved it so much that when I saw the physical copy, I just had to get it. I'm obviously going to reread it and yeah, I just had to have this physical copy. This is about a woman called Nora who goes through a really hard time and basically when she sort of dies, she gets to see the other paths her life could have taken and choose a new path, a new world. And that all happens in this library. It's got really beautiful writing and characters and it's a really interesting concept. So I really love this book and I'm glad I have it. The next book I got was They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. I don't have any of Adam Silvera's books. I know he's a famous YA author, but I saw this one and it was a collector's edition of it. So I thought that was really cool. He also wrote More Happy Than Not and History Is All You Left Me. So it seems like he's a tragic author. Inside's really cool. I don't know what this one is about. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of told me in the title, but I assume it's a romance between Matteo and Rufus, the protagonists, um, and it's a tragedy. Keen to try this one out when I want something predictable. The last book of that haul and this entire video is Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. So this year I tried to read Never Let Me Go because that's one of the ones I have to read for my novelogue. But I just wasn't vibing with it, so I DNF'd it for now. But then uh, another book Sunbound recommendation, they, they liked this book and thought it was really cool. So I was like, I'll give it another go. If Ariel and Raylene like it, then surely it has to be okay. Pick this one up, it's also really pretty and it's in, in a nice big format as well. It's very floppy, I like that as well. Apparently this is about an AI who um, has to sit at the front of a store and is charged by the sun and it's all about her relationship with the sun and being an AI. So I think that's really cool and I'm keen to check it out when I want a sci-fi and to give Kazoo another chance. So there you have it, that is my haul. I'm not gonna even attempt to lift them all up because it's a lot. The biggest haul I have done for my channel. Oh, before I forget, I also got these cute bookends. It's a while. They're pretty heavy, but I got them so they can go on either side of my video. Yay. It was also super cheap. That's what motivates me, passion and being frugal. I'll leave links below for some other hauls I've done if you wanna check those out. Please let me know in the comments below what is the best thing you've hauled recently? What books did you get for Christmas? Are you excited? What's the next book that you'd like to get for yourself? Please let me know in the comments below. Have you read any of these? Did you like them? No spoilers, but please discuss in the comments. I'm Jade the Beamer. I upload every Monday. All my socials are in the description below so you can reach out. Thank you so much for watching watching and for people who might be watching this that got me a book thank you very much take care and i'll catch you next time you little bargains <laughs> goodbye